Okay gents, uh, welcome back to part 5 of the CNC needle cutter machine. Um, in the previous video, part 4, I showed you how to put together the X-Rail, uh, which we did. The only thing I've done since then that I haven't uh, actually recorded on video is the fitting of the drive belt. Um, basically because it's a bit fiddly to be honest and uh, probably takes about 10 minutes, 15 minutes to do. And I thought that, you know, it gets a bit boring on video just watching somebody doing that. So I thought I'd just show you it in action and um, show you how it actually goes together. So if I bring this round to you, you can see the carriageway. You can see the carriageway. The belt attaches here in two slots. The belt actually comes through the back of the plate and then feeds back through the front. So when the tension's on, it tightens it up. Um, it then goes along inside uh, the, the actual track, inside the 2020 extrusion. It goes round the pulley on the NEMA 17 stepper motor, goes right the way round the back, up to the other end, round the belt uh, tensioner pulley, I don't know if I'm in the right place so you can see that, back, back to the plate and feed through the back and then through the front just the same as the other side. So you can see that now slides up and there slides up and down lovely i've also fitted a cable tidy bracket on the top there that's just purely to pin back all the cables that are going to go to this part of the machine um that that'll be obviously in the next video or so so i'll put that down i've been quite busy since uh since fitting that belt and i've actually put together the needle assembly the actual cutter head as you can see there uh, I thought it best for me to fit it all together and then just show it to you and explain which bit does what and what bit goes where etc because these parts believe you me are so small um, you drop them on the floor nine times out of ten and oh, it's, uh, it's it really is a bit fiddly especially when you've got fat fingers like I have and uh, very very little patience but um, all these black parts here have come off your 3D printer and um, they assemble like a Tongan groove type affair. I've glued them together with 5 minutes epoxy rather than using uh, CA glue just to give it a, a bit more strength. Um, and it also gives me a bit more time to align the parts, you know, get them square, etc. So basically, the brackets are this 90 degree shape here that fits on. To the machine onto this back plate. Um, if I turn it turn it this way on, get a little bit closer, you can see the actual cutter assembly. It will slide up and down on these four pins, so it retracts like so. So when it uh, lifts up, it goes over to another part of the the foam sheet and then drops down and resumes its cutting. Um, the motor is just a you know just a Chinese motor that you'd have on your foamy aeroplane. It's a 2212 uh, straight 13T thousand uh, kV motor, so it's only small. I think it only draws uh, just over an amp, I think, um, through the whole system. So it you know it's it's hardly anything. Um, on that, there's um, a flywheel, plastic flywheel. Um, the actual needle cutter, which is a, a 0.6 wire, going through four roller bearings, and these these are the smallest bearings that you've ever seen in your in your life, to be honest. Um, they they're attached with um, I think it's 12 mil M3 screws. They they go into the plastic. Coming through that into a MIG welding tip. I'm sure a lot of you have seen these tips on the the welding machines I'm using that as a support for the actual needle there um, on the front you can just see a nine gram servo one of these uh, Chinese nine grams that you have on your your foamy electric planes it's only a cheapo when the servo arm is fitted um, it, it operates within this slot here and when the command from the CNC is given to raise um, the cutter Obviously, the servo arm turns, 
and that lifts this back plate up in the air. Um, when when it's you know resumes its cutting position, obviously the servo arm goes down and the whole assembly drops down to uh, resume the cut in the Z axis. If I turn it round onto the back, you can see where the four pins come through, the sliding pins if you like. On the back uh, there's a 12 amp ESC, only a tiny one. You can see the cheap and cheerful 9 gram, 9 gram servo to operate the Z axis. Um, and on the top there's a servo tester. Again a cheap Chinese job. Um, it's not used for testing the servo obviously, but it's used as a variable control speed uh, on the motor. So you can turn the speed up and down. So that's basically it. Um, I can show you sort of all the way around so you get an idea of what's happening. All the, the servo and everything is just hot glued onto the platforms. Um, and that's it. So just a basic assembly really. You do it in the morning, no problem. That's if you can find the parts and you haven't dropped them, but still. So what I'm going to do now, hopefully, is I'm going to just lie that flat. I'm going to connect this up to this LiPo. I'm, I haven't got a connector. I'm just going to bodge the wires in. And you can see it actually spinning, hopefully. And just to see it, see it in action. Obviously, it won't be wired up like this on the actual machine because it will be coming through the electronics of the Ordinio board. So, beeps as normal, like your, your model aeroplane would. Turn, turn the servo tester and there she goes. I'm going to lift this up to the camera. Hopefully, it won't come disconnected and you'll be able to see see it in action okay so it's just like a little sewing machine to be fair you can see the needle now is sticking out 9 mil 10 mil or so and that's it so that will be working in that position it will lift up drop down start cutting lift up drop down that's it so at the end of the day once you finish cutting just turn just turn that uh, down to zero and it'll stop your motor. So that's it. Nice and simple. Keep it simple. That's what it's all about. That's about it for this video. Um, apart from fitting it to the base plate on the X-Rail, which goes like that. I may as well do that now, actually. To show you, it's only one, one screw. tighten up the allen key again it's only one screw possibly could do with with having two really but that's the way it's designed if I can just nip that up you'll see what we're on about everything's so fiddly on here it's unbelievable so that's it you can see the needle cutter now mounted obviously it's going to go backwards and forwards like so and it's going to lift up and down as and when required to lift it up in the z-axis so that's about it as far as fitting that goes okay that's about it for this video um in the next video we're going to get onto the juicy bit of wiring the machine up. So we've got to come up with the, the wiring loom to fit, um, obviously, the motor drive, the two stepper motor drives. That goes back to uh, the Ordinio Uno board, which is the main brain of the machine. We'll be taking a look at that and how to connect that up um, and how to flash drive it as well. So that should be quite interesting. So, okay, lads, I hope you've enjoyed the video, um, just to give you a bit more of an insight. Um, if you did like it, obviously subscribe and give us a thumbs up and uh, come back and see the next video. Okay, stay safe and be good. Bye-bye.